A couple of points I didn't cover in this video. Before you take off the sump, you need to remove this plate off the bell housing. It's like the one labeled number three. And also you need to disconnect the oil level sensor from the bottom of the sump, which is a pretty obvious one, but the, the plate is the le less obvious uh, issue. I was trying to remember the last time I took the sump or looked at the bottom end of an engine and I think it was in about 1982 when I rebuilt an XJ6 engine, Jaguar XJ6. So this is a bit of a novelty for me doing this again. Um, just trying to break the seal on the, uh, on the sump. Be careful with this. Um, oh man, it's not going to be easy, is it? Let's try from this side. I can hear the uh, the gasket giving way. But you can hear it's quite loose now. left a couple of um, bolts in because I just didn't want the thing crashing down and whatever residual oil there is in it spilling all over the place probably all over me actually what's coming this is my dad's favorite screwdriver he used it for everything mixing paint opening tins it's quite good because it's got it's it's been used so much it's got a rounded sort of end so it's not sharp, which is why it's quite attractive to use it for prizing things open. Um, let's go around this side. Get this off now. Okay, that is definitely off. So let's take the bolts out. Okay, there it all is, with oil still peeing out of it, which is a bit of a nuisance. I've drained it, but obviously it's uh... Okay. Um, I think I'll take some soundings on the oil chain, because that does seem really slack. Uh, let's bring the camera around. So you can see it's almost dropping down. Look at that. That seems an awful lot of slack. Um, but uh, I'll see if I can uh, talk to someone about that and get their view on it. Um, other than that, everything looks quite straightforward. The thing I've got to replace is the oil pickup. Um, so we've got some bolts to undo, or nuts by the looks of things, or nope, they're bolts. Undo those, drop the oil pickup out, put the new one in, um, and then I've got to decide whether or not I'm going to put the baffles into the sump. So there seems to be split opinion on that. I found these parts in the sump, two little bits of plastic. Obviously this one's more substantial. I thought I recognised it, and it comes from the bottom of the timing chain assembly. If we look at the timing chain from under the car, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. That black thing in the foreground, just up there, that's the bit that you've seen on my bench. So that's the bit that must have broken off before, but... Um, it's obviously been replaced. You notice also that there's staining on the chain for the oil pump, but there's no stain on the chain 
for the camshafts. And it looks to me as though the cam chain has been replaced and the um, tensioner has all been replaced uh, quite recently. And so that explains why the engine is so quiet. Because it doesn't sound, <laughs> you know, they get really rattly. And it doesn't sound like that at all. It's completely quiet from the front of the engine. So the only thing I'm still left worrying about is the um, is the oil pump chain, which, as we've discussed, is very slack. I discussed the state of the um, oil pump chain with Anthony Seddon, and he said as long as the guide is all in one piece, which it looks as though it is, then we should be okay. So uh, I think um, we don't have a problem here. Then I went to the service book and I found this, which I don't know why I didn't look here in the first place. So the timing chain was replaced in December 2020 and I got the car in about April 2021. It's now done 166,000. So it looks as though the timing chain was done about 6,000 miles ago, just over, which is good news. So that still leaves me with an engine that is potentially um, has potentially done 160,000 miles, except for this is the oil pickup that I took out of the car. And I hope this shows, but if you look at the manufacturing indication just there, if that focuses, what it says is 312, which I take it to mean March. 2012 so it looks as though this oil pickup unit was replaced in March 2012 it's quite an unusual piece to replace um, unless you're doing something more significant now in March 2012 um, so I've got uh, records for in uh, February 2010, it had done just under 60,000, and in uh, March the following year, it had done 84,000. Now, bearing in mind that it would have been some time between this part being manufactured and it actually making it onto an engine. So my guess is that the engine was replaced at somewhere around 80-something thousand which means that it's probably done 80,000 miles. And that seems to sort of fit because um, it definitely isn't, it, as, I, as I think I said in an earlier video, the, um, the side of the block is, they get really grotty if they've been in the car for such a long period of time. And the block doesn't look that bad. Um, it's a bit dirty at the front, as you'll see, if I show you. Um, the front of it's dirty, but obviously you've got air rushing through the radiator and, and hitting that area. But the side of the block is not that bad. They're usually really heavily corroded. Um, so I reckon that this engine is about 80,000 miles old and then it's had a timing chain done 6,000 miles ago. Now at this point I had thought I was just going to stick the oil pickup in. Um, I've had the baff baffle done in the sump which I'll show in another video and bolt it all together but I was talking to Anthony Seddon as I said earlier and he pointed out for the sake of £33 for a set of big end shells and um, then a, a bit more for some bolts, big end bolts, is it really worth putting it together without doing the big ends? So um, I've decided I will. I'm going to, going to do the big ends, which is going to be something new for me because I've never done big ends with the pistons in situ, with it all, you know, with the, the whole thing in the engine. I usually, uh, when I've done it in the past, I've had the pistons out and the con rods out and, and then replaced the shells. Um, he said it's worthwhile doing because one of the problems with this engine is that when the... Um, shells wear the tangs that hold them in place uh, sometimes are not that resistant and what you can get is you spin the shell within the 
uh, con rod and the trouble is that when you spin the shell it blocks off the oil way and then you end up with a wrecked engine and I know when I've spoken to um, Rob at 4040 he's told me the same thing that um, he's had um, some engines where they've spun the shell in the con rod so that scared me so I'm going to uh, do the big end shells. <laughs>